one of the best presents I ever received. And it's only just now that I had the opportunity to realize that that was true. Um, um, and, um, alright. A few years ago I got really frustrated with the situation in my life and I decided that the best outlet would be to make a graphic novel. The thing is I had no idea what I was doing. So I just started doing it and I, after a while, just got really frustrated. Things were coming out like I wanted them to. It just looked amateur and a mess. So I tabled it. Sometimes I carry it around with me, but mostly I didn't work on it. I've always been really interested in comics, and I read a lot of graphic novels. As you might be aware of if you follow me on Goodreads or have seen this video. A few of my friends were into comics too. We all read a lot of different things, and some of them started to produce their own. And the last time I visited my friend Corinne in Austin, I was really impressed by what she was doing. One of my friends that I went to grad school with told me about this place that he had briefly worked called the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction. He recommended that I check the place out on my way home from the grad school residency one time. And last summer, I did. Mind you, this is the residency that occurred right after my giant road trip. And during my road trip, when I was in Portland, I made it a point to find the Microcosm storefront, which is tiny and awesome. I went through everything and I just wanted to buy some comics or zines or something. And I found this comic called Sour Puss by someone named Robin Chapman. I thought nothing of it. I liked the comic. I purchased it. I drove around the rest of the country. And then when I'm on my way home and I stop in White River Junction and I locate the college and somebody lets me and they tell me, oh, you should talk to Robin. And as this person goes, to get Robin, I look at some panels that are displayed on the wall, and the comic book that I just bought in Portland is hanging next to them. These are the original panels from the comic book that I just bought, and the Robin that's coming up to speak to me is the Robin whose comic book I just bought on the other side of the country. I think I was far more fascinated with this than she was. Fast forward a year. The first week in August 2010, I found myself back there, only this time as a student. It was a great experience, and though the Center for Cartoon Studies is a college, at this point in my life it doesn't really make sense for me to go back and get another MFA in cartooning. When my word I've been in school so long. But this five day intensive was the perfect amount of time for me to get a feel and learn a ton of stuff. And if you have any interest in comics and have the means to do so, I recommend that you see what you can do to get yourself there as well. The Center for Cartoon Studies is really big on actual physical self-published comics. And a little vocab that I learned is that a self-published comic is called a mini comic, regardless of size. This could be a mini comic, and this is certainly a mini comic. More likely you've heard of zines, and a zine similarly is self-published, only a zine is more of a magazine as opposed to just a comic. I'm not going to try to teach you everything that I learned, but I have to say that in addition to falling deeper in love with the medium, I really fell in love with the faculty too. They were talented, motivating, inspirational, and for some reason I just didn't expect that hanging out with a group of cartoonists would be so entertaining. But that seems like it should be obvious. In addition to demonstrations and lectures on how to thumbnail and pencil and ink your pages and how to clean them up using the computer or using the photocopier, there was a lecture every lunchtime on some sort of comics and I enjoyed learning about the history of zines and romance comics and of course autobio comics, which is probably my favorite genre of a comic and such a big part of comics in general. Wherever Junction is the tiniest town and I kept wondering how the town could even be in existence if it weren't for the college. But for being in such a small place, the facilities were not limited at all. They even had laptops that you could sign out, which is great for me because I don't have a laptop newer than the year 1995. Because I'm already proficient in these areas, I didn't attend the optional workshops on screen printing or bookmaking. However, I love the fact that they offer them. And had I not known, I would have been psyched to take them. CCS also has an impressive collection of graphic novels and comic books in their Charles Schultz Memorial Library. I didn't have too much time for pleasure reading, but I did have the chance to read AEIOU by Jeffrey Brown, Thoreau at Walden by John Porcellino, and I Never Liked You by Chester Brown, as well as skimming through some King Cat comics. In addition to the motivating lectures, it's also really motivating to be surrounded by so many talented people and watch them make so many beautiful things. People came from all over. My roommate was from California. There were people there from New Mexico, Texas, Canada, and you're given a special rate at the Gates Briggs, a hotel across the street, which has a lot of character. I don't know, if you have any interest at all, you should at least know that the place exists and poke around their website. I'll include a link in the doobly-doo. I also really loved how encouraging they were of cheating. Yeah, don't draw it if you can trace it. Don't trace it if you can steal it. Totally legit. The Center for Cartoon Studies, I love you. I just needed to say it. Thanks, Mom.